So I'm always on the lookout for an open source native to-do application. I have used a to-do list for a very long time, and my go-to application for many years has been Todoist. And Todoist is really, really good. It's very featureful, and they offer a good user interface, and it's on multiple platforms, and it's just really good. The problem is, of course, that it's closed source, and a lot of their features are behind a paywall, and it's, you know, it's not the best situation to be in because I'm reliant on their software and I don't really want to be. I'd like to have a more open ecosystem for my reminders slash to-do list. So I'm always kind of on the lookout for an application that can replace Todoist. So today we're going to be taking a look at a potential candidate for such an application. It's called Reminders, very cleverly, and it is open source. It is a GTK application. I don't really care that it's a GTK application. Even though I'm using Plasma right now, it still seems to look and work just fine. So that's not a big deal. And it does the basics. Let's just put it that way. So that's what we're going to take a look at today. Let's go ahead and jump in. So this right here is Reminders. Now this is available as a flat pack, so you can get it on pretty much any distribution you want. And it looks very, very nice. So one thing I will give the GTK folks is that they make their applications look really nice. They offer developers a lot of options for making their applications look and feel and function in a simple yet elegant manner. Was that a, was that diplomatic enough? I think it was. Anyways, the look and feel of the application is spectacular and it fits in well even on a plasma system. It just looks nice, right? Now obviously I don't have a specified GTK theme set so it's just falling back to add away to dark which is fine add away to dark fits in pretty much on anything that you choose and it works fine so the look and feel is nice so let's move past that and get into the functionality because this is where the application kind of falls down but only for me and i'll explain that here in a minute so if you want to add a reminder you just hit the blue button here and you give it a title so make another video you can give it a description this video is going to be awesome, more awesome than usual. And then you can mark it as important if you want. You can also give it a location. Now locations are actually lists. I don't know why they call them locations. I'm guessing it's because there's a, a directory somewhere that it's actually storing this stuff in. Not sure, but it's inconsistent with everything else. They call it a location here, they call it a list over here. I'm not sure why they do that. So locations are lists. In this case, I have two lists, local reminders and the Linux cast. I'll keep that as it is. You can set a date and time, just like you'd expect to. You can choose from a calendar selection, just like this. And then you can select the date and time, just like that. Now, here's a weird part. If you want to have the reminder to repeat itself, you can do so. Just click the on button here. Choose how often you want it to repeat. So if you want to repeat every day or every two days or every three days or whatever, you can do that. And you can even choose how long that repetition lasts. So if you only wanted to repeat it until July or you want, only want to repeat it until three weeks from now, you could do that. You could also choose the number of repetitions you want to display in total and then it would end. The problem that I have here and why I said it was a little weird is that if you turn off send a notification, the option to select a time and the option to set a, rep a repetition goes away. They completely take that away from you if you don't choose to send a notification. I'm not sure why they've chosen to do it that way because if I don't want a notification sent or I don't use a notification daemon or whatever, I might still want my reminder to repeat itself over time. It seems like those two things should not be linked, but that's just the way it is. So you have to have this checked in order for a repetition to actually work. And then we just hit save. That's all there is to adding a new task. I will say one thing is that some of these buttons are very picky on where you click on them. So if you click on like the outside of the ad app, sometimes it doesn't quite click it. It's not going to do it this time. I've noticed it a couple times. And the same thing if you hit on some of the outsides of the buttons, it's not always going to register as a press. It doesn't do it all the time, just sometimes it's a little weird. It may be that the fact that I'm running in Plasma and not in GNOME, maybe there's some kind of GTK thing going on there. I don't know. You can display all of your reminders from all lists, so that's easy to do. And you can also see upcoming reminders, past reminders, things that have been completed. So if, if you want to complete a reminder, you can hit complete just like so. And then it would show up in the completed reminders list here. So. Once you've completed all your reminders, you can view past completed reminders, which is something that Todoist makes you pay for. So that's a nice feature. 
Outside of that, that's really the entire application. And that's one of the reasons why it's not quite for me. So there are some preferences here. So if you wanted to go to the preferences, you can sync this with Microsoft To Do. I don't use Microsoft To Do. I would refuse to do that, but I know a lot of people do use this, and if you use it for work, you could use this as a replacement for the Microsoft To Do application, which I believe is Electron. Don't quote me on that. I've never used it, so I'm just guessing. You can also choose how often the application refreshes if you're syncing from Microsoft To Do. So if you're pulling from Microsoft To Do, you can choose how often it syncs. It will also allow you to choose a time format and play the notification with sound. Those are all the settings there are. That's it. I really wish that this synced with Todoist because I know Todoist does, I believe, have an API. I may be wrong about that. I know that there are other third-party Todoist clients, so I'm assuming that there's an API of some kind. I wish that this synced with it. That'd be really cool. It doesn't, though. So if you use Microsoft To Do, this is a good alternative for you. For me, not so much. And that's kind of where I've fallen on this is that it's just, if all you're looking for is a very simple reminders application, I don't think there's, there's one better. Because I've been looking for this type of application for quite some time. And I've tried many of them. For me personally, I need one that has a few more features. Things like projects and things like tags enabling me to easily search because... While this application does have search, without tags, you're going to be reliant on your ability to create very descriptive titles and descriptions and stuff like that, which I'm not always good at doing. So I would prefer there to be tags because when there are when there is a tagging system, I use that, that tagging system and I'm more apt to be able to actually find things when I want to. You can sort your reminders as well up here in the corner. That's basically the rest of the application. I just need so, a, a few more features. I would like there to be some color coding here. So when you have, when you're viewing all reminders in all lists, I would like there to be some kind of indication of what list each of these things are, is in, right? If either color coding or even just a, you know, a text indicator of what list that reminder is in would be really cool. But they don't have that. I would like just some kind of, because I, I could get past the, lack of project integration and stuff like that if there was color coding because what I use projects for in Todoist is to color code so that I know what to do's or reminders are in what category right so if I if it's you know a personal to do you know like go shopping or something like that or if it's a work to do you know whatever it's a different color so they kind of stand out because this is the primary page that I use in all of my to do clients right is the all reminders feed or the all to do lists or whatever where they're kind of all together without color coding you kind of can't tell what list is you know applied to each one of these and that's kind of disappointing so for me personally not going to be switching to this unfortunately because I was kind of excited about it but if you're looking for a very simple reminders application I think that this is a good option for you because it, it has the basics if all you need are the basics this one has it and it's good so that's the reminder application if you have thoughts on this or if you have ideas for where I can look next uh, in terms of, of a to-do application I've tried task warrior it's too fiddly for me I know I'm a nerd when it comes to using things in the terminal, so you'd think that I'd like Task Warrior, but I don't really like it. I'm more interested in a visual of a to-do list than just having it out of sight, because I always need my to-do list like right in my face if I want to actually do the things on the list, and Task Warrior kind of buries that, and add on top of it, like I said, it's kind of fiddly, so that's not an option. I've looked at other options like the, the get things done stuff and none of that stuff really works for me. That's kind of why I've been stuck with Todoist for a long, so long and you know that's why I continue my search. So uh, comments in the comment section below. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing. Without you, the channels would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so very, very much for your support. Seriously, guys. Thank you so much. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.